Hi, this is Jeff Heaton. In this video, we're going to talk about MLPerf. MLPerf is a benchmark. Now, we've seen other benchmarks in these videos that I put together for my YouTube channel. One that we've looked at before is glue, and glue is a great way to measure the accuracy and the effectiveness for natural language processing models. MLPerf is a benchmark more for looking at how fast the underlying hardware infrastructure and software can actually train common neural networks deep learning tasks. MLPerf is set to release version 0.7 today and I wanted to do an update on that and talk about some of the results that companies are getting in MLPerf. NVIDIA just released a, some very, very exciting results in MLPerf. They're now doing very good on eight of the tasks that make up the MLPerf benchmark. To see all my videos about Kaggle, neural networks, and other AI topics, click the subscribe button and the bell next to it and select all to be notified of every new video. So if you navigate to MLPerf.org, you can have a look at what makes up this benchmark. As you can see, it deals with training and inference. So how quickly can you train a neural network and get scores out of that neural network? Inference is very important for when you want to push one of your models to production. Training is what we're going to talk about in this video. Let's just go right to the results because you can see the results from the latest time that they released the results from this benchmark. Now you can see that the last time, before today anyway, that they had released results was on July 10th. Now this is kind of a Kaggle competition for hardware manufacturers and for accelerators that go into the deep learning frameworks like TensorFlow and MXNet and PyTorch. What this is really good for looking at is should you be using a TPU? Should you be using a GPU? I get asked about this all the time from my students and others. And this gives you peer-reviewed results. So this is not just these companies auto submitting some results like you might do in a Kaggle because in a Kaggle you can just verify the accuracy. Benchmarking is really hard and if not done properly can give misleading results. What is very good about MLPref is that they give you these benchmarks on a variety of different tasks in deep learning. Image classification, object detection, and they've added some new ones that you'll be seeing in the results that come out today that deal with BERT and recommender algorithms. They also revamped the way that they did the Go reinforcement learning benchmark. Now, if you look at the results, and these are from the ones that is just about a little over a year ago, you can see they're benchmarking TPUs. They show the amount of time taken for these. You can see the results from Google with their TPUs, NVIDIA with the DGX1, which is a very powerful machine business class that you can obtained from NVIDIA. Now the results I'll show you from this release today deal both with NVIDIA dealing with their supercomputing capabilities as well as the individual performance. So this lets you look at things like the Tesla V100 versus the very, very new Ampere A100. And even if you're not planning on buying this sort of hardware to run in your own systems, you'll be seeing V100s and A100s when you use cloud systems like AWS and Google Cloud. Right now, the V100 is the one that you most commonly will see in the current platforms in AWS, and AWS is what I work with the most. The A100s are available in Google Cloud, and we'll be looking at those in future videos. So you'll most likely, if you're working with cloud-based systems, will be seeing this, this very hardware. So let's have a look at the results that NVIDIA is releasing today in conjunction with the MLPer results. The computer that you see here is the NVIDIA DGX SuperPod. This is a supercomputer, very, very high-end. Some of the results that you see in this benchmark were obtained from supercomputer performance machines that NVIDIA puts together, like the DGX SuperPod, which you're seeing here. This is 
a computer that can that is being deployed at universities and industry partners of NVIDIA. Now they don't just show you these results on supercomputers, they also break it down by the individual chip performance, which lets you see more how an A100 compares to a V100, compares to a TPU, compares to like the third generation TPUs that Google is working on. Also, all of this material that I'm showing you for the results obtained by NVIDIA, this comes from a blog post that NVIDIA will be putting out today. I'll have a link to it in the description to this video. This is the DGX SuperPod results. You can see them here. Basically, lower is better. The X's indicate that results were not provided. You can see in things like NLP BERT and the image classification tasks how the new A100, which I really think you're going to be seeing a lot more of on cloud technology, and believe me, we will be covering in future videos, compares to TPUs and other cloud resources. Now compared to the V100, you're, you're getting, in some cases, per chip anyway, double performance, and we'll see that more in the later slides, but you can see that essentially there is a, in some cases, there's a four times performance gain in 1.5 years. Now these are the results that I am really interested in. This is because I just probably will not be installing a NVIDIA supercomputer in my basement. It'd be really awesome to do that, but probably I will be using these resources through the cloud, through AWS, through Google Cloud, and, and those. This is where NVIDIA took the results and normalized them to essentially single chip performance or comparing a, a V100 to an A100 to a third generation TPU and the Ascend. And you can see the, the results for the A100 are consistently across all of the benchmarks reported here really very good and often doubling the performance of the V100. Some of this is simply raw hardware performance, but some of this is also additional software capabilities that they are allowing you to add to TensorFlow, PyTorch, and MXNet. We'll get more into some of those specific accelerators that they make available in the A100 when I start looking a little more deeply into A100 Cloud versus V100. Quite honestly, A100 is very new and is not something that I've had a chance to really check out in the cloud all that much. And this is really showing you the results in some of these individual benchmarks that was achieved in just 1.5 years. I mean, a lot of what we're able to do in deep learning is really coming on as a result of just increasing capabilities of the hardware. What you can get in Google Colab, even Google Colab Pro, where you often get access to a V100, is really just the technology that not that many years ago you would have only really dreamed of having access to. And on the supercomputing side, the DGX pods are really being embraced by industry and university together. You can see some of the partners that are going to be looking at these. Really excited about the A100 capabilities and really hope to be talking about those more in upcoming videos. Thank you for watching this video. And if you're interested in AI, machine learning, deep learning, please subscribe to my channel and give me a like for this video. Thank you very much.